Hi. Um, what I wanted to do was take you through Chapter 11 uh, page by page using the online uh, edition that you can access through the McGraw-Hill website. Uh, or you can just follow you know, with the hard copy of the book. But uh, by using the online version, I can put that up on a screen and I can use a Camtasia screen capture software to show you as I'm scrolling up and down uh, my comments on different things. So we're going to start off with uh, the very beginning of the chapter. And I'm just going to move past the introduction of the case study to the next page. And we have at the top a discussion of the uh, role of financial managers. And the, the beginning of the chapter talks about what is finance and what do financial managers do. Uh, and it says here, finance is the function that acquires funds for the firm and manages those funds. So basically that's what it is. Uh, financial people are people that deal with money and managing the money within the firm. And the activities of finance include budgets, so you figure out what you're spending on cash flow analysis, which is figuring out how much you're spending the money, and planning for the expenditure of funds on assets, you know, things you have to buy, machinery, office space, uh, um, leasing equipment, all kinds of things like that. So a good definition uh, is right here, uh, right in the middle of the page where it says, finance the function of business that acquires the funds, manages the funds within the firm, and financial management is the job of managing a firm's resources so it can meet its goal and objectives. And what do financial managers do? Uh, basically, they're the people that tell the CEO the different things he has to do in order to have a strong financial uh, activities of the firm. So we're just going to continue scrolling down. This is just a little bit of a case study here. The importance of understanding finance. Uh, this is just further with the case study, and we're going to go to the next page. And we're going to talk about financial planning. So as it says right here, financial planning is the key responsibility of the financial planner, a manager in a business, and it shows the different functions. So short-term forecasting, long-term operating, the master budget, the capital budget, the cash, and financial controls. Those are the functions of financial planning. So... What is forecasting? Well, you've got a short-term forecast and a cash flow forecast. One of the biggest problems in a business is not money, but money that's needed to spend on cash. And the cash flow forecast is simply a fancy way of saying, what is the actual things we have to spend cash on within the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks to make sure we have that? We can't necessarily uh, borrow credit against that. We actually need cash to pay out for things. And, of course, the long term is, is what long term means. And talking about a budget, a budget is just the financial plan. And there's different types, an operating budget, capital budget, and a cash budget. Now, the operating budget is, as it says, ties together all the firm's other budgets and summarizes them, et cetera, et cetera. So the operating budget is based upon the operating plan. It's a very important part of the firm. Capital budgets is things that are major purchases. So... Um, large pieces of equipment, um, expensive vehicles, uh, real estate in order to set up offices. That, that's what the capital budget is. And the cash budget is short-term things. So just continuing. Financial controls. Just like what it says here. A process in which a firm periodically compares its actual revenues, costs, and expenses. The whole purpose of talking about control is so you can make corrections and do things rather than letting it get uh, more and more problematic. The need for funds. So this is a very important part of this section, why uh, financial management is important. And you've got the, uh, the key areas of day-to-day -day needs, controlling credit operations, acquiring inventory, and making capital expenditures. So here we are up on page uh, 309, talking about controlling credit operations. So credit operations means when somebody is selling something 
to you or buying something from you and they don't have the money, you give them credit. So that's an important part of a business because you have to be very careful about how you do that. Acquiring inventory. Basically, uh, that means the ability to have product uh, to sell. Sometimes you're talking about component parts. We talked about one part of this in Chapter 9, the whole just-in-time thing, talking about capital expenditures. Now, one of the things that's important to understand is alternative sources of funds. So you've got a couple of points here about debit financing, equity financing, short-term and long-term financing. So debit financing is just a fancy way of saying we're going to borrow some money. Equity financing is when you say, okay, uh, I own 100% of the company. If you step in and give me uh, $2 million, I'm going to give you 20%. So I'm going to give you a share of my company. That's equity financing. So when you let people become part owners. Short-term financing is when you uh, get money for one year or less. It could be boring against uh, income coming in or those kinds of things. Long-term usually could be something related to um, some uh, issuing of bonds or some long-term bank relationship. Trade credit. Uh, there's a phrase here, 210 net 30. 210 net 30 means if you pay me within 10 days, I'm going to give you a 2% discount, but you still have to pay within 30 days. Uh, because of the way that business is operating these days in 2011, a lot of times the most popular phrase is 210 net 60, meaning companies got 60 days to pay. And the 10% discount is not a big thing, you may think. But let's say you're talking about a deal that's worth $100,000. $100,000. 10% of $100,000 is $10,000. So if you're able to save $10,000 by paying, uh, you know, within, a, sorry, uh, if you're able to save that amount of money within a short period of time, it's, it's quite significant. Um, it says here 2%. Sometimes a lot of companies offer higher, 510 net 30 or even 1010 net 30 because 2% seems quite low. Family and friends. A lot of people, when they get laid off from a company or they get uh, fired, want to take some of their severance, start a small business. They might ask their parents or aunts or uncles that are quite wealthy or some friends they've known for a long time. That's a, a very common thing for starting up a business. Commercial banks as a source of financing. These days, the banks are very, very hesitant to lend money to small businesses. Basically, uh, they want you to be able to have uh, equity and assets and all kinds of things like that. Uh, the, the bottom line being, if you had all those, you would have borrowed the money against them already. So most people actually don't use small banks for business. They, banks are usually only lend money to medium and large size enterprises. Different forms of short-term loans, secured loans, and unsecured. A secured loan is something backed by some property. So it might be that the company has uh, 10,000 leather jackets that they're about to sell, and they want to borrow some money to be able to buy some more leather. So those 10,000 leather jackets might have a wholesale price of that value worth, say, uh, you know, $500,000. And so you could use that in order to be able to borrow money uh, because that would be something that if you didn't pay back, then they would take possession of those leather jackets to turn around and sell them. Unsecured loan is one that's not backed by any assets, and it's a lot more risky. Usually people who are just close personal friends would, would give you an unsecured loan. A line of credit. Uh, a line of credit works like this. If I borrow $10,000 from the bank to do something, from day one, I start to pay interest on it. If I have a $10,000 line of credit, I don't pay interest unless I use it. So let's say the line of credit is worth $10,000. I take $1,000 out of that line of credit. I'm only paying the interest on the $1,000, and I have the option to pay that back within a couple of days or, or a couple of weeks. So sometimes people prefer uh, paying on a line of credit rather than a, a straight loan. Factoring accounts receivable. 
This is uh, most often done in the clothing business or in the schmutz of trade, as people say. What that means is rather than you borrowing $10,000 off of somebody to, to put together your uh, you know, clothing line, what you do is you go to a guy who's uh, quite wealthy and he works in the clothing trade and you say, listen, I need this money to put together a clothing line. And he says, I'll tell you what, I know a guy who knows a guy. How much are you paying for the fleece fabric? And you say $5 a meter. Ah, uh, don't worry about that. I'll get the fleece fabric for you because I can get it at $4 a meter. So then he asks you, okay, how much are you paying for the cardboard boxes? And you say, a uh, dollar a box. You say, ah, I know a guy who knows a guy can get you those boxes for 50 cents. But don't worry, I'll pay directly for that. So what this person does is he pays for the boxes, he's pays for the fabric, etc., etc. You continue to put the product together. Then when the check comes from the person that you sold it to, you don't get the check. The person who factored all this gets a check. He pays his expenses and then gives you some money after the fact. Uh, commercial paper. These are unsecured promissory notes. Um, amounts of 100000 are up. If a company has a good reputation, sometimes people might buy that, but it's not too popular. Uh, maxing out your credit card. That's another thing that people do to start your small business. Many people have a credit card that's worth uh, 10000 or 15000 and, and that allows them to uh, max out their card and get financing that way, as long as they can pay off the minimum monthly dues. The long-term financing, that's a little bit more complicated because you have to have more specific goals and objectives and a much more detailed business plan in order to be able to obtain that financing. So this is the information about obtaining long-term financing. And the little case study, debit financing. And borrowing money that you have an obligation to, to pay back. So you've got the term loan agreement and uh, debit financing by issuing bonds, which is popular for medium and large size companies, which is the same thing as the way the government has bonds. And advantages and disadvantages of bonds. Uh, the advantage of uh, issuing bonds is it's not the same as, as paying back a debt, but you are obliged to be able to pay back that paper to the, to the creditors. Equity financing. Equity financing is popular when somebody thinks that a company is doing so good, rather than lending them money and getting paid back with interest, they'd rather say, okay, I'm going to give you a large amount of money, and then I can own part of your firm. So rather than lending you a million dollars, I'd rather give you $5 million if you let me own 20% of the company. Because I think in the long term, that 20% is going to be worth millions and millions of dollars. So that's why sometimes companies get equity financing. You can get that just simply by becoming a partnership in the company or by being given a stock which is of that value. Advantages and disadvantages of, of issuing stock. Well, one of the disadvantages of issuing stock, of course, is that you no longer own 100% of the company, that it's owned by the different shareholders. As long as the shareholders are widely diluted, meaning uh, one person has 5,000, another person has 6,000, someone else has 3,000, etc. That's okay. But if all of a sudden somebody comes along and starts buying up the stock from all the individual shareholders, then you could actually lose control of your company. And that would be called what's called a leverage bio, an LBO. And that's the summary, and here we are at the end of the chapter. So that is uh, chapter number 11 on financing.